You've probably heard people say, a qubit can be both zero and one at the same time. But that's not exactly true. And it can be a bit confusing. In a regular computer, each bit is either a zero or a one, never both. But a qubit doesn't pick one right away. Instead, it stays in a flexible state, where it could become a zero or a one, depending on how we work with it. Let's make this easier with a coin example. A classical bit is like a coin lying flat. Heads for zero, tails for one, but a qubit is like a coin spinning in the air. It hasn't landed yet, it's not heads or tails, it's still in motion. Now here's the interesting part. In a classical computer, we only use the final result when the coin lands. But in a quantum computer, we can actually do things to the coin while it's still spinning. We can nudge it, tilt it, influence it before it lands. That's what gives quantum computers their special power. Now imagine trying to break a password. A regular computer has to try one guess at a time. Is it this? No. Is it that? Still no. If there are a million options, that might mean a million steps. But qubits can represent many guesses at once, like testing lots of passwords in parallel, all while the coin is still spinning. Then, when we measure the qubit, when we catch the spinning coin, we only get one result, but that result is shaped by all the steps we took. While the coin was still in motion, so no, a qubit isn't magically zero and one at the same time. But it lets us work with a bunch of possibilities at once and guide the system toward the right answer, faster. That's called superposition. And it's one big reason why quantum computers could someday crack passwords way faster than classical ones. Want to go deeper into how this really works? Drop a comment with what part you'd like explained. And don't forget to like and subscribe for the next part in this quantum series.